Hi, I'm Alex Jordan from Learn Color Grading and from Simplify.com and today I'll show you the most important color grading styles that all filmmakers should learn to recreate. <laughs> Notice that I said all filmmakers should learn this, not all colorists. Because at this point, I think um, color grading is a basic skill that all filmmakers should learn at least the basics of. It's important to note that this is not a definitive list of all the color grading styles to ever exist. This is a list of all the basic styles I think you should learn to recreate first before moving to other styles. You can think of this as a starting point. These styles are where you start when you want to recreate, uh, when you want to learn to recreate styles. So let's start. This is the image we're going to be using today. All the styles are going to be recreated on the same image. And one last note before we start, we're not going to go through over details on how to create each and every style because there are multiple methods of creating each one of these styles. However, we're going to be looking at just the basics or the guidelines of how creating or recreating these styles work. The first style is the low key blue look. To get this style, usually it's pretty simple. You want to start by reducing the saturation, actually not that much, just reducing it a bit, bringing the gamma down just to make the image low key so the image looks much darker now, maybe adjusting gain a bit. And finally through offset, just making the image really blue. Note that it's very easy to miss the right blue color here because some bluish colors will look very unnatural. So it's very important to keep on experimenting until you get the right blue tone for this particular image. So this is the original image, the new one, and this is the low key blue look. It's very popular with a lot of movie genres. Maybe we just need to adjust the offset a bit and much better. Take a look at the image before and after. The next style is the uh, high key, uh, you know, vibrant image with a lot of colors, which is pretty simple to achieve. I mean, for this image, all I need to do, for example, is to increase saturation, increase gamma a bit, and maybe just bring lift down a bit. However, I wish things were that simple. Let's reset. The problem here is that when you increase uh, saturation, each of the colors in the image is saturated in a different way than the other colors. So let's say we started with an image with where red is very saturated, and then we increase the saturation of the entire image and maybe blue was less saturated. The final image will have red being very oversaturated, you know, and without reaching the right saturation level for blue. And this can also be said for highlights and shadows. So the trick for this style is to simply control the saturation using the proper tools and not simply using uh, the saturation slider. For example, for this image, I will start by clicking here to activate the luma versus saturation curve, and I'm going to increase the saturation in the middle. And then I'm going to control this point left and right until I find the right saturation point. For example, if I move this point to the left, Note that I saturated his shirt a lot. However, if I move it to the right, I saturated certain parts of the image without oversaturating his shirt. So just move this to the left and right and you can see the difference. Then I'm going to switch from Luma versus saturation to hue versus saturation. This is where we control the saturation of different colors. So I'm going to click on these dots to create a point for each and every color, and then I'm going to experiment with every color. So for example, red up and down until I get to a, a good point for the saturation. Yellow, you can see how this controls different parts of the image. Green, take a look at this part here. Cyan, blue, maybe oversaturate. Look at this part here, how we're controlling blue in a separate controller. And finally, we can control magenta and take a look at the original image and the new one. Not a big difference, but this is another style, which is the high key saturated look. Again, the key for this uh, look is to control the saturation in the right way. So trying to balance the saturation the way you want and not simply increase the saturation slider where different uh, colors will get saturated in different ways. Then we have the muted yellow look. Uh, this is another popular look and it's pretty simple to achieve. Basically, I usually just reduce the saturation of the image and then I only control the uh, blue channels. Notice that I switched to primary bars here. So I'll just bring blue down in highlights 
until the image becomes a bit yellow. And I'll just repeat the same for gamma, bringing the controller down or up until I get to a good point. A good point simply means a place where the image looks natural. So here the image doesn't look natural at this point. Let's undo. And finally, I'll just control lift. And notice that here you can uh, bring the contrast slider down a bit. You don't have to increase contrast. Actually, you can just bring contrast down just a little bit and take a look at the original image and the new one. And this is the yellow muted look. And you can even reduce the saturation a bit more. And again, take a look at the image before and after. So this is the new image. Let's reset. The next look is the bleach bypass look. The name came from bypassing the bleaching phase when um, people used to uh, process color film. And getting this look is pretty simple. I'll simply start by adding a new node. I'll go to color, nodes, add the serial node. This is a new node. And now I need to add a layer on top of this node. So this node is a layer. I need to add a new layer on top of it. And it's pretty simple. To do that, I'll simply go to color, nodes, and add a layer node. And now I have a new node added here. And in the new node that was added, I'll simply bring saturation all the way down and note that the image now just became black and white. That's because the new node that was added, even though it looks at the bottom, you know, it's, it's below the original node, this is actually the layer on top. So if this was a layer-based system, the first node was layer one and this was layer two, and we desaturated the new node. So we desaturated the uh, upper layer. So now all we're left with is a black and white image. And the final step is to simply right click on this node here, which simply merges both. So right click, go to composite mode and select overlay. And this is the bleach bypass look. Take a look at the original image and the new one. It's a very popular look with action films, for example. One more tip here, if you want to take this to the next level, note that we still have the first node that we had on the image. We kept this node for a reason. For example, I can use it now to recover the highlights by simply going to the second set of controllers here and bringing highlights down. And then I can stylize the image in the first node. So I can simply click here to open primaries and maybe change the highlights color a bit, change the shadows color a bit and take a look at this image. This is the original image and the new one. We were able to achieve this look in a very fast and easy way. And this was the bleach bypass look. Let's reset. The next look is the cross processing look. This is when uh, they used to process uh, film. Uh, in chemicals that were intended for a different type of film, but that's where the name cross-processing came from. There are many ways to achieve this look. I'm simply going to discuss the most basic way and the easiest one. So to do this, I'll simply switch to custom curves. These are the curves and I'll click this button to ungang the curve. So now I can control each curve separately. Now I'll simply go to the red curve and bring shadows down. And in the same curve, the red curve, I'm going to bring highlights up. Then I'm going to select the blue curve, bring the shadows up. So the opposite direction from red and also in highlights, bring it in the opposite direction. So I'm simply going to bring the highlights down in blue and take a look at the image. This is the original image and the new one. This is another very popular look. Take a look at the image before and after. And notice how easy it was to get this very popular look with very little adjustments to the custom curves. The next look is the hot day look. So we just want to give the feeling that the weather is very hot today, for example. It's pretty simple. To achieve this look, I usually start by increasing contrast a bit, then switch into the second set of controllers, changing the temperature until I get a very yellow image that resembles a very hot day. Note that I controlled both the temperature and tint here. Finally, I will bring the saturation down. So I'll just bring saturation down. And then at this point, try to control the pivot to get it to the right point I want. So this is just basically a matter of taste and getting the right setting for this image. And take a look at the original image and the new one. Actually, we still need to change the temperature and tint a bit here. And the tint a bit more and much better. Take a look at the image before and after. Of course, this is just the basic controller because if I really wanted to mimic uh, a very hot day, I will be using windows, you know, to select certain parts of the image, increasing the brightness and lowering the brightness in other parts. But this is just an overview of how to get to these looks fast. The last look is the brown look. I, I call it brown because it reminds me of coffee. And it's pretty simple to achieve. I'll simply bring the color boost down. So I'll just make sure that the image is barely saturated. So notice that I can bring the color boost all the way down, increase it up just a little bit until I get maybe to this level. And then I simply start by controlling gamma. So I'll just bring gamma lift, right, up or down until it becomes a bit red. And then I'll bring gamma down. And then I'll simply control gamma one more time, up, down, left, right, 
until I get to this color and then I'll just bring the colors even down more and I'll repeat the same a bit with gain but just to a lesser extent and just bring it down maybe just controlling gain one more time gamma usually I leave lift alone unless I needed to correct something here and just bringing gamma down and then I'll just bring color boost down even more and increase it up just a little bit and much better take a look at the original image and the new one and these were the most important color grading styles that every beginner should learn to recreate first before moving to recreating other styles. So um, I hope you like this. I hope you found this helpful. If you like this, please visit us at filmsimplify.com where you can join our DaVinci Resolve crash course that will take you through every tab in Resolve and is designed for the absolute beginner. Thank you. Simplified.com.